Hi everyone, I hope you're all feeling great today. We're going to paint an endemic Philippine species of a bird and of a native tree. We did the sketch in pencil and we are now covering the sky area, which is everything except for the bird and the branches. And we mix a white with about 10% blue to get a perfectly light blue sky. I am really very excited to be able to paint an endangered Philippine endemic Rufo's hornbill or a Philippine kalaw together with a Philippine ironwood native tree they call Mangkono or Magkono. I think this is the first of the series of three paintings that we will focus on endangered or endemic Philippine birds and Philippine native trees. So now we mix blue, yellow, and red to create a very dark brown, almost like black, as the first layer of color for the branches. It's uh, really just something playful when you make the branches. Just use a filbert round brush and you'll be good to go. And remember that uh, the proportions of the branches, the, the beginning part of it that comes from the tree is bigger than those that are extending out. As a beginner, um, it is best to practice on how to lay down the brush so that your lines are clean on the edges and when you make the uh, twigs or the little extensions on the branches, it's something that you just think about and you don't really need to copy exactly what you're copying just play with it and check how it will look later when you have the leaves on it and of course you must uh, be able to make the branches continue on from where it comes from to your paint mixture that you use on the branches add a little white so that we can put highlights on the branches just on the upper portions because that's where the sun touches the branches then on the same mix where you add a little white you can add a little raw shanna or a little yellowish tint to it so that it becomes a, another shade of mocha or a lighter brown that becomes another layer on the highlights and later you can you can have a third layer which is more white and you just dab them on certain spaces where you think it will be nice to see dabs on sign light on the branches next we mix um, blue and yellow and a little red so that it becomes somehow uh, an old green like more of an olive green we use a round brush and just dab it make it uh, press it on the canvas so that it creates a roundish kind of leaf which is the kind of leaf the mancono is after the dark olive green mixture i go to a uh, some primary green just a plain mixture of yellow and blue and then another layer of leaves will be 
adding yellow to that so it becomes um, a yellow green and then the last one will be adding more yellow and white to that mixture so that it's the palest color of the leaf again when using the round brush it's a matter of practice on how you lay it down on the canvas so that you get this kind of shape Oops, I forgot to video how I did the Mancono. In any case, I just used blue and yellow to produce green and added um, red if I wanted it dark and added yellow and white if I wanted it lighter shade. And as you can see, the leaves have different tones to them and for the berries which later on become flowers or is it otherwise in any case there's just a mixture of blue and yellow but it's more yellow and then for the new leaves that you will see there that uh, i used orange and um pinkish shades to indicate that these are new leaves that have come out and highlights are important on the berries and the flowers are a little bit difficult for me because these are very 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 thin lines that come up and I had to cut up a portion of my already tiny detail brush because they were still are giving me uh, thicker lines that in the end I think I got the effect that I need and the tips of these uh, very fine lines are little yellow powder like dots For the body of the bird, we mix blue, red, and yellow to get a very dark brown. And for the wings, we added a little bit more blue to make it have a different tone. and. To that mixture, we added white so that we can put some highlights on the upper portion. And then we use orange for the uh, feathers coming from its beak on the head and also on the lower portion and also for the uh, skin of the hands and we use a brush that is 
not even on the edges anymore so that we can create some kind of texture and that's uh, how we paint on the bird and for the uh, tail we just put a little bit of raw sienna or yellow ochre on white and for highlights we use plain white to create a natural looking feather like tail of the kalau here i am adding in a different color to make some kind of lines that is a bit lighter redoing some highlights sometimes you will have to go back and forth and check after it dries out how the highlights look and then you just keep layering a little bit more and making the colors go a bit lighter to intensify the highlights to create a more of a 3d effect on the body i thought i would put some more highlights on the branches i am now using orange to put a, something like three fingers of the bird I went back to the tail part and created some shadows using a darker shade of the mixture of white and uh, raw sienna and I, I put a little bit of the brown. I'd like to thank my teacher during this painting class lesson, Mr. Elmar Badal the artist of Eshishak Art Cafe. Yay, we're on the beak part, and that means we get to finish the painting. We use plain red and cover the beak part and the red looks like a crown. <laughs> Something like a rooster has. I, I forget the name. Anyway, we cover all those parts with red.
We use a detail brush to create that line to indicate the beaks uh, division, upper and lower beaks. A pinkish tint is used to highlight the beak and also the crown. And another shade of that is adding more white again to the mixture. We use yellow and then orange and later we will use brown to finalize the details on this mass of feather uh, on the upper part of the body of the kalau. As an aspiring painter, I have yet to find my personal subject. I have yet to know what I am really very passionate about in working on my paintings. I love landscapes and somehow I, I want to go back to the old settings, I mean like what Amor Solo did um, but I have to find out what really makes me happy when I paint and I think I want to go into partial portraits with maybe leaves or graphics around it I'm not sure yet so in the meanwhile I just we ju I just practice all different kinds all different styles and probably one day on my own i will discover what i really want to do and how what kinds of techniques i will use so that i can portray something that is really my own unique style but in the meanwhile, I continue to do some paintings and practice because my fingers, before they start to really tremble when I hold the brush, they have to memorize how to use each brush. And I still have yet to find my favorite brushes. So I have been going back and forth everywhere when I look at the painting and I see something that I need to work on then I go there and check that area and finally cover up like I saw some white uh, spots or uh, very tiny dots white maybe the painting didn't cover the canvas fully so I go back to that and cover it and now we go into the final details and after we finish the eye of the kalo then I think we're good to go. I dream about discovering one day what I would choose as my topic or my subject matter like my oil painting mentor Mr. Pandasal he painted a lot of Pandasal in his till life paintings and when I was going to 
his classes uh, way back 2013, I think, 2003, at the Vargas Museum. The notable and very popular and highly in demand artist, Mr. Fernando Sena of the Vargas Museum, was my first mentor. If you are still watching up to this time, I'd like to thank you for being with me. And please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, please share it with others. And hope to see you again in another painting class that I attend. And this is how I share it with you. Thanks so much everyone for watching this video. We're about to finish this painting. As I do this painting for the Rufo's hornbill or the Philippine kalaw, and also for the Philippine ironwood tree, which is Mangkono, I pray for their existence to stay on forever. I just pray that some people will be discouraged from killing our endemic birds and trees because this is where God has chosen for them to be in our country, the Philippines. So I hope that we Filipinos will take care of them. Thanks everyone for being with me. This has been one very happy day of painting for me again. I hope to see you soon in my next painting lesson. Thank you and hi to my classmate, Dr. Lupe Lazaro. Travels, gardens, Ikinobo Ikibana, zero waste gardening, making money, painting, family, friends, prayers. Please like my video. Please ring the bell below for notifications. Naku, maraming salamat po sa inyo.